Thank you for logging on to HudsonTV.com and this initial edition of Hudson Political Insider View. I'm Jeff Hennig. Joining me today on this first edition is Congressman Albio Ceres. We will be talking about something that has been in the news, especially in the last few years, the American immigration policy. We will specifically discuss what took place on Father's Day in the city of Elizabeth. Congressman Ceres, thank you for joining us on HudsonTV.com. There has been a lot of news in the past several years concerning the American immigration policy, uh, a lot of controversial news on what the proper policy should be. On Father's Day, you, along with two other members of the Democratic congressional delegation from New Jersey, Congressman Pasquale, Congressman Pallone, joined with several of the Democratic House members from New York in visiting a ICE detention retention center in the city of Elizabeth, and you were quite shocked by what you saw. First of all, tell us what prompted the visit from the congressional members. Well, what prompted the visit is the policy of this administration of holding these people and then separating them from the children. We met with five of the detainees. Four of them had children. One of them got separated from his two-year-old girl, and he thinks she's in Michigan. There is no procedure, there is no policy in terms of what to do with these children after these people are detained. So they don't know where they go. They assume they're in good hands. But the shock of it all is that they just separate families. And that's what, inhumane. Where does the separation take place? Where were you told by these people that you met with? Were they separated at the border? And just so people know, these people were wanting to enter this country and gain asylum. Right. Where did they get separated from their children? I, they, they, four of the five crossed the border and gave themselves up, asking for asylum. They didn't come here for a job, they didn't come here to do any misdeeds. They came here because their stories were horrifying. One particular fellow had a business. He was being shaken down by the gangs. His partner was killed by the gang. Then they went to pick up his daughter at the school. Luckily, she was going to school in the afternoon, and the gang members went in the morning. So he decided that he was no longer going to stay where he was. So he took his daughter and decided to come across and ask for political asylum, because if he would have stayed there, they would have killed him and take his daughter. And these are some of the stories that we heard over and over again. So most of these people that you met with, they were here not to look for work and come into this country illegally and look for work, take jobs away from Americans. They were fear fearful of their own lives from the countries that they were leaving. Yes, they were fearful for their lives. And this policy that all of a sudden we have of separating families is inhumane, it's immoral. I have never seen this policy being so aggressively pursued like I've seen it with this uh, government. There has been, uh, over the last several years, a lot of um, disagreement among the Democratic and Republican members in the United States Congress over how to handle the immigration policy, how to make changes properly. Uh, I believe it was back in 2013 uh, that the the Republicans and the Democrats had the, had the, let's call it the big falling out, where the agreement on a proper policy did not take place. They would not agree to a proper policy. What do you think? What is the next step? What is the step that needs to be taken? Uh, what are the, the Democrats talking about doing? How do they address the things that the Republicans are implementing now? Well, let's talk a little bit about 2013. Okay. Because the Senate passed a comprehensive immigration bill. They had about 70 senators. Then when it came to the House, the House would not put the bill up for a vote. That's back in 2013. Boehner would not put the ball, would not put the bill on the floor to be voted. What needs to be done at the moment is basically stop this policy of separating families. You just can't go around separating families. There are over 2,000 2, children that have been separated from their families. That has to stop. And then we have to find a way to resolve this issue with the Republicans and the Democrats. We are dropping some bills uh, next week, and we'll see where that goes. 
there has been a lot of bipartisanship among members of the, the House themselves over what they believe should be done. Um, but I want, I want to read you a quote, uh, part of the tweet that the President sent out uh, yesterday, and, and get your take on this. Um, he said that Democrats are only good for three things, high taxes, high crime, and obstruction. You came to this country from Cuba when you were 11 years old, so this issue has got to hit you very hard and hit you at your core and very personal to you. When you hear the president tweeting something like that, when you read those words by our president, what enters your mind? Well, what enters my mind that he's a liar. He says one thing one day, says another. He's just trying to inflame so he can stir up his base because he knows that the elections are coming up in November. And that's all it is. This is all politics. And what he's doing is playing to his base. People come here for different reasons. We came here because we were refugees. We left the communist country. And we were welcome here. And we made the best of the opportunities that this country had to give us. My parents worked. My brothers worked. As a matter of fact, I always tell people, when I got to the refugee center in Florida, they gave me a coat and a pair of uh, uh, gloves. I have paid for that glove and that coat a million times over with the taxes that I contribute to this country. Let me ask you one final thing. When you saw the conditions at the detention center that these individuals are under, aside from the fact that they've been separated from their children, they may or may not know where they are right now, what was the center like? What are the conditions like where they're being held right now in Elizabeth? Well, they were, from what they told us, they were one big room. Sometimes there's 25, sometimes there's 35 in a room. They have these bunk, they have these beds. And basically, they don't do much during the day. And it was unfortunate because they're desperate. They want to know about their families. They want to know about their children. And they've been detained there and waiting to be processed. And I would imagine that is something that could take quite a while. If you were to put your, your best guess on some type of a resolution to this immigration policy issue that we currently have. Do you foresee something getting done in the near future, or is this something that is going to continue in your mind to drag on? Jeff, I would hope that something can be done in the near future, something bipartisan. There are a number of bills that are going around. Some of them are very harsh. Some of them are understanding. Some of them are, are with the moderate Republicans. We have to find the right bill that we can, both sides can work together, and then this problem once and for all. I'm sure this certainly is not the, the way you expected uh, people to be treated when they were coming into this country, unlike the way you and your family were treated all those years ago. No, I, I, this is beyond description. You know, when we first arrived here, my, the, my father was taken away for four days. He was being vetted. They were asking him if he was a member of the Communist Party, how he had taken arms and forth, which we understood. And then they returned us, uh, our father, four days later, and let us come up to New Jersey when we landed in Florida. I mean, it took four or five days just to get my father vetted. Well, Congressman, hopefully all of you in Congress will be able to come up with something that is acceptable to the President and uh, we can move on from what is obviously a very difficult situation for everyone involved, especially those that are trying to come into this country. Congressman, thank you for your thoughts. I appreciate it. Jeff, thank you very much. I'm Jeff Hennig in West New York for HudsonTV.com.